Hello everyone and welcome to part 3 of the Galaga SDL tutorial series. So in this video I wanted to create the scoreboard for the game. And the reason why I was keeping the scoreboard for uh, its own video is because I didn't want to use the texture class to just put the score in there. For example, if I do something like, let's say, texture pointer m player1 score, and this will be the score for player one. Now, if I take that and I create the score right here, so M player one score is going to be equal to a new texture. And this will be zero, zero. And then the font will be EMU logic.ttf. And then the size will be 32. Um, the color will be 230, 230, and 230. So if I do something like this, and then I add it as a child, so the usual thing that the, that I did for the rest of the stuff, so m player one score parent is m top bar, and um, so you don't need to do this. I'm just trying to show you why uh, I'm creating a class just for the scoreboard. So this part is uh, just creating a normal texture. And then when I want to change the score, I would just create a texture with the score in it. And the way that we have our texture manager set up, um, we give it a string and it gives us back a texture with that um, string on it, rendered on it. And the biggest issue is that, is that even if it's cached, we would need a new texture for every different number that we pass in. So to fix this, um, what I want to do instead is to separate each single digit as its own digit and then create the score out of these digits, one digit at a time. That way, we would create digits from zero to nine and then cache them and then we would get the digits over and over again so we don't render any new text because rendering text is very taxing. So this is what I want to do. And to do this, we can just, uh, okay, let me just remove this now and this as well. So, and then I will remove this from here. So what I will do now is create a class just for the scoreboard. So in Galga, I will add a new item, a dot h, and create a class called scoreboard. And in here, I will do the if not defined. So if not defined, underscore scoreboard, underscore h, define, underscore scoreboard, underscore h, and then end f class scoreboard and I want scoreboard to inherit from game entity and since it will contain textures I can just uh, include texture.h so include texture.h and I will also need a vector so I will include vector now in here I will make it uh, inherit from game entity so public game entity and since I'm using the quick SDL framework, I will be using, so using namespace quick SDL. And now we can create our private variable. And we only have one variable for this one, and which is going to be the vector that keeps track of all the textures. So that will be std vector. And this will be of type texture pointer. And we'll call this one mscore. Next up are the public functions. So we'll do public, and then we will do the constructor and destructor. So scoreboard and scoreboard. Now I will also need uh, one function to pass the score to the scoreboard class. So I'll do void score, and this will be int score. So or I can call it set score. And then I will do avoid render. Um, actually, I really don't like set and get in the name, so I'll just call it score. So void score and score, and then void render. 
Now finally I will need one private function and this will be called void clear score. And this will be it for our .h file. It's a pretty small class. Um, now if I go to my CPPs in Galga, I will create a scoreboard.cpp. And in here I will include scoreboard.h. And then I will create my constructor. So uh, for my constructor, I'll do scoreboard, scoreboard. And in here, I will set the score to zero. Now, next up, I will do the uh, clear score function, which will be void. Actually, no, I need the destructor scoreboard destructor and the destructor will just clear the scoreboard so this all that's gonna be doing and next up I will uh, implement this the clear score function um, actually it would be much more descriptive to call it clear board so I'll call it clear board now in here I will I will be calling clear board and then here I'll do void scoreboard clear board and what this will do is delete all the textures in score and then clear the vector so for int i equals 0 i is less than m score dot size and then i plus plus delete m score at i and then m score at i is going to be equal to null and then down here I will just say m score dot clear and this will be it for my clear score function now for the big function which will be the score function so void scoreboard score this will take an int score and here the first thing that I will do I will clear the board so clear board and then check if the score is equal to zero because in Galga when the score is equal to zero it has two zeros there so I will say that if the score is equal to zero then I will just um, I will just loop twice and pa and just pass in m score to just push back into m score a zero and then another zero so for into i equals zero i is less than two and then i plus plus and then here i'll say that m score dot push back a new texture and in here i will say that the texture is zero and the font is mu logic dot ttf the size is 32 and the color is 230, 230 and 230 and after I do that I will set the score to be the parent of that new texture so the scoreboard will be its parent so I'll put it in here m score m score at i parent is going to be equal to this and then m score at i position is going to be equal to a vector 2 of negative 32.0f and it's going to be multiplied by i oh 32.0f multiplied by i and for the y it's going to be 0.0f and this way uh, we'll have it so that our ones units are um, right where the scoreboard is and then it's gonna start um, adding to the left of that so now um, this is going to be it for our score is equal to zero so now we need to handle if the score is more than zero or not equal to zero I guess uh, so else what I will do is convert that score into an into a string so I will do std string str is going to be equal to std to string and I will pass it in the score now 
I will have I will try to get the last index of that string because we'll be reusing it quite a bit. So we'll do int last index is going to be equal to string dot length minus one. And then for int i equals zero, i is less than or equal to the last index, and then i plus plus. And then I'll start pushing back a substring of that string. So because I want one character at a time. So what I will do is say m score dot pushback a new texture. And this texture would be string dot substring of i and the size is one. And then next up, the font will be mulogic.tdf. The size will be 32, and the color will be 230, 230, and 230. So this will be it for this part. And then we'll do the same thing that we did here. So we'll add it as a child and then set its position. So we'll say that our m score at i parent is going to be this. Now the position is kind of different because um, whenever it's converted to a string, whenever an int is converted to a string, the last number on the left is actually the zeroth element in that string. So we need to start, we need to put that all the way uh, to the left and then start adding backwards. So for that we'll do m score at i position is going to be equal to a vector 2 of negative 32.0f multiplied by and then in here we'll do the last index minus i and then for the y it's going to be 0.0f and then this will be it for that Next up, we are going to do our render function, and all this would do is to go through mscore and then render all the textures. So void, scoreboard, render, and then in here we'll do for int i equals zero, i is less than scoreboard, no, mscore dot size, and then i plus plus, And then we'll do m score at i render. And this will be it for our scoreboard class. Now we can just use it in our start screen. So if we go to the start screen, we can include, so include scoreboard.h. And then in here in the top bar entities, we'll add both of these, one for the, well, three of them, one for the top score, one for player one and one for player two. So we'll do a scoreboard pointer, m player one score, a scoreboard pointer, m, m top score, and then a scoreboard pointer, m player two score. So we have these now, we can uh, initialize them in our CPP, so start screen.cpp, where the top entities are, we'll do it here. So we'll say that our M scoreboard, or M player one score, is going to be equal to a new scoreboard. Our M top score is top score is gonna be equal to a new scoreboard. And our M player two score is going to be equal to a new scoreboard. Now we need to add all these three as children of the top bar. So M, player one score, parent is the M top bar, M top score, parent is going to be equal to the top bar, and M player two score is going to be M parent is going to be m top bar. 
So this should be it for now. Uh, what we can do is set all the positions of these three as the positions of these three for now, so that we can shift them down whenever we need to. So we can put or we can copy these and paste them again. But this time, or this one's going to be a player one score. This one is going to be the top score. And this one is going to be player two score. So all we did is just uh, set all the positions to be the same as player one, high score, and player two. Now that we did that, we need to clear the stuff. So M player one score or delete M player one score. And then M player one score is going to be equal to null. Delete M top score. M top score is equal to null. And then delete M player two score. And then M player two score is going to be equal to null. And the final thing that we need to do is to render these scores. So down here, right underneath player two, we'll say M player one score render, M player two score render, and M player, or I guess in between these two, M top score render. And that should be it for this part. So if we try to run it, let's see what it looks like. There we go. So we have our scores here. Um, so usually the high score started off at 30,000. So we need to set it to 30,000. So we'll do that um, down here. So we'll say that our M top score score is going to be 30,000. And then once we start saving the player's uh, top score, we can change that later. So let's set that to 30,000 and see what it looks like. So there we go. And now we need to move these down a bit and to the right. So to do that, what we're going to do is to um, is to shift all the Y's for these down a bit. And the Y's, let's say, it would be 40 for each one. So 40, 40, and 40. And let's see where they are now. So this looks like a pretty good place uh, on the Y. Now we need to shift them on the X to the right. So in here, instead of uh, multiple, so negative 35% of the screen, let's move it back to, let's say, um, um, let's say 25%. Let's see what this would look like for player one score. Okay, so 25 uh, looks okay. It's still a bit too close to 1UP, so let's move it back a little bit more. So 23%. And then for this one, maybe we'll do the same thing as, uh, as those ones. So we'll take the graphics instance, so width. So graphics instance screen width multiplied by 0.05F. And this will move it to the right a little bit. Okay, so this looks pretty good now. This looks pretty good. We just need to move the 2UP back. And for that, we will have it. So instead of 0 0.2, um, so this one, we moved it back by 12%. So from here to here, let's say 32 to be consistent. So now, now we have that. And there we go. So now we have a way to set our score. And now if I make it like, let's say six, five, four, nine, seven, nine, eight, seven, and I try to run it. There we go. So the score is updating and we're not creating a new texture for every single different score. We're only creating a texture for like, for example, in here, we're creating a texture for one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And these are all the textures that we're creating and we're just reusing these textures to display our score. So I really hope that this video helped. If you have any questions, suggestions, or feedback, please leave them below in the comment section. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.